There's more people on the planet who have been to space than there are master sommeliers. Watch this video to find out why. Now I am not a master sommelier. I'm a certified sommelier. Here's my pin right here. But let's talk about what that means. Before we get into that, what is a sommelier? The word sommelier, it simply means wine steward. It's a French word, and it was an originally a French position in French restaurants. It was the person who managed the wine cellar, assisted the guest, managed the wine list. And today, it still is used like that, especially in a lot of upscale restaurants. But sommeliers do all kinds of stuff. They run wine shops. They may do consulting for wineries. Some people just go and get the certification for their own personal knowledge. It's like, are you an artist if you just create art at home and you don't sell it? People debate what the word means, but that's not what we're gonna do in this video. In this video, we're just gonna talk about the different certifications that are out there and how to achieve them. First off, you don't have to take an exam to become a sommelier. It's kind of like being a musician. There's a bunch of famous rock stars out there who've never taken a formal music class. You can work in a restaurant as a sommelier and have no certification whatsoever. But if you did want to go for a certification, let's talk about the institutions that provide these sorts of exams. Now there's actually a few different bodies that give these exams and certifications. There's the Wine Spirit and Education Trust, or WSET, the Society of Wine Educators, Wine Scholar Guild, Institute of Masters of Wine, and the Court of Master Sommeliers. I actually have a pretty strong opinion about which one of these I think you should pursue depending on what your goals are, so I'll say that at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around for that. But today we're going to talk about the Court of Master Sommeliers, which is what I have. I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers, and that's probably the most famous institution. That's the one if you've seen the documentaries that they're talking about, and the Master Psalms I talked at the beginning of this video, they go through this program. So the Court of Master Sommeliers has four levels. Introductory, Certified, Advanced, and Master. I'm at the Certified level, the second level. The Introductory level is pretty much just like a weekend class. You take a pretty simple test at the end and you pass. The Certified level is the one that gets a little tougher. And then the Advanced and the Master are super tough. The Master, I think you have to apply for. You have to spend years of working in restaurants. You have to get accepted from your application. So that's where it starts to become really challenging. The bulk of people who are sommeliers in restaurants uh, often are certified sommeliers at the level I'm at. For the certified, the advanced, and the master, they're all a three-part test. There's a theory portion, a service portion, and a blind tasting portion. So the first part is the theory portion. Now this is either written or oral as you get to the higher levels, but it's just basically a test. It's a theory test. You know, where do these grapes come from? Where are they grown? What are the characteristics? It tends a lot to do with place, understanding and knowing all the subregions and wine areas of the world. It's also not just wine. You have to know a little bit about beer. You need to know about spirits and cocktails and cigars. So it really is all encompassing. And the number one way I recommend to prep for this test is just good old fashioned studying, just doing flashcards. I mean, when I was studying, I remember sitting on the couch for about a year of my life, just going through flashcards, really, really trying to learn and just ingrain all this knowledge in my head. The second part is the service exam. Now what you do in the service exam is you have to serve one or several master sommeliers and while you're serving them wine, they're going to ask you really tough questions. So the service portion, you might have to pour red wine or sparkling wine and do it in a proper way. Maybe you have to decant wine and while you're doing that, they're firing questions at you, maybe about pairing. They'll dig deep. So if they find something that you're iffy on, they're gonna dig deep, because that's what good teachers do, right? They're gonna find the areas where you're weak and try and point them out so you get better. Um, and so that's the second part of the exam. And people who work in restaurants often has an easier time with this part because they're used to doing this kind of service, right? So the people who go and just get the certification for personal purposes, just because they want it, it's often a little tougher for them to do this portion of it. The way I studied was I was in a restaurant and I worked with people in my restaurant who had already taken it, I practiced on them. I forced my roommates to practice with me at the time. I sat them down at a table and I practiced doing the proper service. Um, so that's really the best way to prep for this part of the exam. And then the last part is the blind tasting. This is the third part. And this is the part that gets all the fanfare. You see it and it seems very intense and impressive. When I did my certified, you only had to do a red and a white, but now I think you have to do two, two whites, two reds. Um, and then at the advance and the master, you have to do three whites and three reds. And you get the wine in front of you, you don't know what they are, and you have to say where they're from, 
what grapes they are and approximately how old they are. You gotta try and get a vintage. Now, you don't need to get exactly what they are. It's kind of like showing your work in a math problem. You need to have your conclusion make sense. And obviously as they go to the higher levels, it gets tougher and tougher and you have to be more and more accurate. There's a whole kind of theory behind blind tasting and how to do it. Um, but that's the thing you see focused on in a documentary a lot. But it's really just a culmination of the theory. You know, if you don't know your theory well, you won't end up being able to do the blind tasting. Hypothetically, I'm doing a blind, right? And I can say, okay, this wine has, you know, cream and oak, and it tastes like this amount of mineral and this acidity. That information doesn't help you if you don't know what wines in the world have those characteristics. So you really need the theory before you can get into the blind tasting. Now, the number one way to prep for the blind tasting component is to get a tasting group together. So you need to find people in your area who are taking the exam, who are into wine, preferably at least one person in your group is already passed and so they can kind of mentor the others. Every other week you bring six wines, everybody brings a wine, you know, so you have six people, six wines, or six people, 12 wines, and you taste together, you blind taste together, and you learn from the other people. Because a lot of times when you're smelling, You'll be like, oh, I smell something, but I can't put my finger on it. And somebody else will be like, it's this, and it, it kind of clicks with you. So it really is the only way I can do that. No man is an island with this part of the exam. You really need some help to kind of get into the blind tasting part. So that's it. That's the three-part test for the Quartermaster Sommeliers, and it gets harder and harder as you go up. Now, I would recommend uh, for the quarter masters in particular, it does help if you work in restaurants. For reason, like I said, you're able to practice, use their resources, things like that. And it also helps to have a mentor or somebody who already did it that you can ask questions for, they can help prepare you, they can help quiz you, etc. So what do I recommend? Do I recommend taking this exam or any of the other exams? Well, like I said, you don't have to take any. But for me, it was actually good. The structure was really good for me. Like knowing I had a a deadline where this test was gonna be really forced me to work my face off and study really hard because I wanted to pass and I wanted to achieve that, that goal. But it depends what kind of person you are. You might not need that to learn about wine. Now, if you are gonna go for one of the exams, the Court of Masters is great, especially if you work in restaurants, but it's more about the feather in the cap. Like that's the one that you can put on a resume and a lot of people I think know it. But if you're actually looking to learn, especially if you're looking to learn only for personal purposes, I actually really like WSET, W-S-C-T, uh, Wine Spirit Education Trust. They do a much better job guiding and hand-holding you through the process. Their tasting classes are really great and there's more of them throughout the process. I just think they do a better job of actually educating. The Quartermaster Sommelier is basically after you take that introductory exam, they just give you the tools you need and they say, see you in a year for the certified and you have to go find your own path and your own way to study. So I think that WSET does a much better job on the education portion. That being said, if you took the exam and you had a different experience, let me know. I'd be curious to hear it in the comments. All that being said, I started Vias for Vino because when I was taking my Court of Masters exam, I just found that it was really complicated for most people. I figured most people would wanna learn via video and travel and food and all the things that make wine fun rather than do flashcards and study. So I made a wine TV show, Vias for Vino, in order to help teach you what I learned through the traveling and the studying so you don't actually have to do it yourself. So if you haven't checked out our show, Vias for Vino, the full episodes are here on our YouTube page, so be sure to check them out. If you've made it to the end of the video, I wanna thank you for your support and hope it was able to help you learn. If you're interested in learning more and want to be a part of an amazing community, check out our Vino VIP club in the description where you'll have access to members only content, behind the scenes from our full episodes, raffles, virtual tastings, and more. Plus, you'll get early access to season four of Vias for Vino, which is coming out pretty soon, and you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. This season I go to Spain, Portugal, Italy, and France, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, until next wine.